Welcome to Unfold Data Science. My name is Aman and I am a data scientist. In this video, I am going to give you a walkthrough of TensorFlow for absolute beginners. Let's start. Let's start this video with some comparison between TensorFlow and PyTorch since last five years. Okay. I have given a filter of last five years. I can give a larger filter also, but let's see last five years. If you see here guys, right? TensorFlow you will see was, you know, way beyond PyTorch. If you go around 2019 and all, okay. And slowly what started happening is PyTorch started moving up recently, 2022 and after that, okay. What that indicates is both of these are famous frameworks due to some of the things with PyTorch that we discussed as part of last video. PyTorch has gained more momentum, but TensorFlow is there since long, long time. And it's a very, very famous framework in the world of deep learning. Okay. Having understood that, let's go ahead and try to see what are the topics for today's video. So we are going to understand why TensorFlow is such a popular framework in the world of deep learning. Then we are going to see how TensorFlow works, okay? Then we are going to see what is Keras and what is TensorFlow and how they are different. Then we will do an assignment. We will do an hands-on uh, work and we will get our hand dirty with TensorFlow and then we will discuss some additional topics as well, okay? So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to show you why TensorFlow, first of all, is a very, very famous and very, very, um, you can say, established framework in the world of deep learning, okay? So TensorFlow has some of the very important properties, guys, that we need to understand here. First of all, TensorFlow is very, very efficient, okay? Very, very efficient, very, very scalable, okay? Very, very scalable, very, very flexible, okay? And if you want to integrate TensorFlow with cloud frameworks, or if you want to integrate TensorFlow with your own APIs, if you want to integrate TensorFlow with some other platform system, right? It binds very well with some other systems, okay? So that makes it very, very uh, easy to integrate, okay? Easy to integrate. Due to these four or five properties, TensorFlow is one of the most famous deep learning framework available in the market. Okay, another advantage of TensorFlow is it has a very, very large set of users. So what is the meaning of large set of users is you will have more libraries, you will have more support, you will have more communities, you will have more discussions, more advancements, more research, right? So all that thing will be there. Hence, this also benefits a lot to the TensorFlow since it is an old thing, okay? Now, what is TensorFlow basically? So as we know, it is a framework for deep learning, but if I have to break TensorFlow in two parts, right? I will say Tensor and Flow, okay? So in other words, you can say flow of tensors, flow of tensors. Now, what makes TensorFlow so special is there is a concept of TensorFlow known as computation graph, okay? Computation, I will just show you how that works, but just know this computation graph, okay? And this is the thing that makes TensorFlow really, really fast. Now, going back to the basics of what is a tensor. So in, I told you in the PyTorch video as well, basically an ND array, you can think of tensor as an N dimensional array in the language of Python, okay? So, I'm going to show you one example from my notebook. I have I have created one example uh, to demonstrate how a tensor will uh, travel in the tensor flow. Okay, so suppose this is my tensor. Okay, so I will say my tensor is equal to 12, 3. This is my tensor. Okay. Suppose I want to do some operation inside TensorFlow framework on this tensor. I'm going to explain you what is the meaning of a computation graph, okay? So with this example. So suppose this is my tensor and I want to do some operation on this. So how it will flow inside the, uh, inside the uh, 
uh, framework i am just going to explain you 123 is the tensor okay let's see this is the tensor suppose this tensor enters okay into the tensor flow framework okay so this i will write here in okay once it enters suppose i want to pass this tensor to a node called prod so just pay attention here guys there is a, there is a node called prod node on this prod i am passing this tensor 12 and 3 okay and what i am doing is i am passing this tensor to another node which is a sum node okay so here i am passing my tensor to another node which is a sum node okay now i am calling this this node as b and this node as c just naming naming i am giving and i am calling this as a just for example what i am doing here is what will be the product here 12 into 3 so let me make it the same color basically what will be the product here 12 into 3 36 and what will be the product here uh, 12 plus 3 15 okay so here i will define one more node i will call this node as add okay add and what i will get as output is i will get 51 as output through this example what i am trying to show you is how this particular 123 tensor flows through the network okay so this concept that i just explained you is called computational graph where nodes is equal to nodes is equal to mathematical operations mathematical operations mathematical operations okay and uh, ages is equal to tensors okay so as it is clear from this all the edges that you see are tensor this is again one tensor this is again one tensor all the edges are one tensor and nodes are these operations okay so this complete concept is called computational graph and this is how internally tensor flow works now if i have to write the same thing in python how i will write that let me show you with with same example in python okay so i have already written it actually i just want to show you that so first of all i am installing pip install tensorflow simple i have installed here importing tensorflow as tf and print tensorflow version so this is fine no issues now whatever i was doing in the notebook guys the same thing i am doing here okay so what i am saying is defining there should be one more n defining and using the graph okay computational graph i am using what I'm saying here is with tensorflow.compat, compat I think is standing for computation only, v1.session as says tf.constant, I'm defining my tensor here and I'm saying this is my input A, define a tensor, okay? Same thing, replicating the same thing that I explained you now, okay? Where is my graph? Yeah, so in the A, I'm inputting my 12.3, okay? Then I'm defining reduce underscore prod. I'm calling that prod underscore B, prod underscore B. I should, I mean, don't go by naming, just the fundamental concept. So I'm pro producing one, uh, I mean, creating the product and I'm creating the sum, two things I'm doing. And then both these output I'm taking and I'm just passing it to the uh, B and C to the add. So here I'm passing it to the add. And as you can see here, uh, it is returning me in the output 51. Okay, so what I'm doing here is I'm doing the same operation that I showed you through without using any APIs through normal TensorFlow computational graph. So this is how internally it will work. Okay, so here I'm writing the raw code, raw TensorFlow code. Okay, then I'm running the graph here and getting the result. Now, one important thing to understand here is normally you will not write these kind of codes. Why? because if you remember right you can you can create a website using html css okay html and css just to give you an example if i have to create an unfold data science website i can go ahead and write an html and css code or what i can do is i can use a pre-built template of a website and you know 
give it the flavor of unfold data science okay so two ways if i want to create unfold data science website i go and start writing html css code or easier way for me is i built a uh, i use a pre built framework right some kind of wordpress websites or something and i can create my own website right so this bottom part is easier for me similarly if i tell you to write a machine learning model using this way right it's going to be very very difficult for you using this way because everything you need to write by yourself from the raw so generally we don't use this way okay so what we do is internally tensorflow engine will run so here let's say tensorflow engine will run this is your tensorflow layer here your computational graph everything will work as it should work but for the users benefit people have developed some apis and one such api is known as keras which sits on top of tensorflow okay and keras makes your job easier okay so as a programmer your and mine job will be easier if we use keras so i'm going to show you an example of how keras as an api is being used to use tensorflow engine let's see that in python okay so if i go to python so here you can see import numpad uh, numpy pandas same thing tensorflow then i am saying from tensorflow import keras okay so i'll be using keras now then i'm not going to explain you these normal stuff i am just importing a data set describing basic stuff only doing some feature engineering that's not much into the context of this video okay just to have some data running okay i am doing this some basic analysis and some you know separating the source and target what i want to focus more here is this part okay now what i told you is these are deep learning frameworks so if you remember in my pytorch video i was explaining you how to create a pytorch network right neural network here if you want to create a tensorflow network right you will say tf.keras.sequential so what are you saying to the model give me a sequential network okay then see here model.add you are saying tensorflow.keras.layers.dense means fully connected you give some parameter of your output size you give your input shape and you say what activation function you want to use that's all okay only three things you are saying what output you want you are saying your input size and you are saying what activation function you want okay so you have to pay attention to input output and activation now if i go and follow this link right you will see that exactly same thing that i am showing you is here okay so this is basically tensorflow's official documentation so this exact same thing layers dense output input and you know name is optional so you can see from here it is basically the same thing and then in the end since i am doing a classification so dense one one layer will come into picture so from here to here is the most important part how do you define a tensorflow model just define a sequential how many layers you want what is the number of neurons you want and um, what you want in the final layer and what activation function you want once you do this your model is defined then you define your optimizer then you compile your model and you fit your model it's very very simple to do then these are simple stuff once your model is there you get the accuracy etc and you can print it okay so i just showed you one simple example of uh, using an api such as keras right how can you use tensorflow now my question to you is in place of keras i can use other apis as well can you please comment me which are those apis i can use where tensorflow run in background and i use that api can you comment it, comment that okay after that i also want to tell you there are some very interesting stuff in the tensorflow world okay one is known as tensor board another is known as tensor serving tensor board is more for visualization seeing what is going on in the model etc and tensor serving is more from the deployment point of view and serving your model in the end point okay so these are slightly advanced topics but i can create the videos if i see enough interest please drop a comment saying you want video on tensor board and tensor serving i can create that okay before that just drop me a comment on what the question i asked and let me know if you have any doubts on this okay so just to summarize guys we saw what is tensorflow what is a computational graph in tensorflow 
we saw how to write from scratch without using any package. Then we used one package and we wrote our code. And then I left you with some uh, topics. If you are interested, we can have more videos on that. Okay. I'll see you all in the next video, guys, wherever you are. Stay safe and take care.